so much fucked up shit to get into. Stinkers. Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey here with Cal Dungella. Hey, everybody. Hey, Mike. How are you? Our beloved Jacob Fervin Matera is feeling ill tonight, so he will not join us. But I'm sure his uh, t- will be all good by next week. Be ready to go. You is know it? Jake's ass better than anybody. You think next week's a good ass? I know his ass. I do know. Yeah. I uh, slapped it pretty well earlier today, so... <laughs> He's on the mend. All right. Jake, if you're watching, our our hearts and our mouths go out to you. <laughs> Jeff Simmons, welcome, brother. Uh, chili. Yeah, a little bit. I'm getting yeah. warmed up with my nice little fleece hoodie. That is. You look like a um, an Easter penis. Thank you. I've always meant to say that to you. This is what I wore to uh, Area 51 because I thought it was kind of alien uh, looking. You were kind of spooky. You think you spooked them out? Take me to your dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that cop uh, that I was did. there? Yeah. He was nice. He was and fine. he said something about, uh, I had like a little alien doll or something. And he said, made a joke. And I was like, hey, brother, as long as they're not probing me, I don't care what they do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I don't think he was 100% on board with that. Just a fucking middle of nowhere <laughs> Nevada sheriff dealing with like clearly city tourists. But he didn't arrest us. And we had plenty of miles to drive with a bunch of weed. I wonder, yeah, I guess Nevada is... Legal weed now. You can't really get in trouble for possessing it. I don't know. Where's legal? What's not legal? I just think they would probably leave you alone now, most places. Yeah. You'd like to think. I would like to think that. Yeah. And I do think that. And I do what I like. And I like what I do. Oh. I like that about you. It's really tough without Jake here, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Jake, we missed you so much, man. Please come back soon. (laughs) Oh, dude. Well, fortunately... If we get to do a stinker tonight, man, oh, man, I I would feel terrible if we got to do Impractical Jokers without Jake. Yeah, I almost don't even know if I'll give it my all on the coin flip on this one just because well, he's not here. He would want you to give your all. You're right. You're right. And, you know, that's what happens when you get sick? You miss you a day of class. Coin. Yeah. Could be something important. You lose coin tosses. Could miss all the Joker's birthdays <laughs> <laughs> that I would just make up off the top of my head if oh. I actually won. All right, well, give it a rip, and we'll see. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay. I feel good about it. Okay. and... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good sound and boing we had there. Okay, I like the weight of this today. Let's go, baby. I really want to talk about this guy, so please. I didn't even flip, dude. What's going oh, on? It's so cold it's again. It's in my favor, man. Let's go. On the floor, on the floor. No! Yeah. <laughs> Jake, we did it again. I love you so much, God. and I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we brought him back, and uh, if I just like set up a commode in his spot for him to have his tummy troubles on. Yeah. Do you think that's what he's having? I do. I know that's what he's having. You think it's that way though? I do. But stomach bug for children, I feel like, makes him throw up. He's not a child. <laughs> But he said he might have stomach bug. Yeah. That means diarrhea if you're an adult. Because adults don't I, throw I, up, I, right? To me, it means both. You be bullfrogging like that? <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, dude, my wife <laughs> bullfrogged one night. It was... I was compassionate to a degree. Was he on the toilet at least? He... I'm talking about my wife. Oh, I didn't hear that. I thought you said my one boy. <laughs> my, my wife. I was just she, hoping you didn't say that about your own wife. <laughs> no, my wife. She was vomiting and she shit herself while she was oh, vomiting. Man. And she told me and I was like, oh my God, I, I hope you feel better, but I don't want to know that about you. Yeah. But you have to. That's intimacy. Yeah, it is. That is. That's true intimacy. Yes. People think fucking is intimacy. Real int- intimacy is seeing your partner with shitty pants. <laughs> yeah. Real intimacy is me ripping farts from day one and still not having heard my lady fart in the same room as me. Get out of here. Oh, she's so polite to me. That is so nice. I know. Wow. Sometimes she lets him loose in a different room, though, and I'm like, hey, hey I heard that down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife, man, she's the exact that. My wife acts like a clump around me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, this woman. Lovely well, lady. Man. She's all better now. Yeah, no, she's not. <laughs> oh, dude. But uh, I've learned so much about today's stinker. Um, I will never get tired of learning about him. I feel like I've just scratched the surface of what I've learned about him. And as luck would have it, today there was a bunch of news that came out about him. Really? He's acting up. Well, it is dictator month here it in is. January. That's so. probably what got him riled up. Because he knows that we're doing it. He does. So, And he recently celebrated a birthday, too, which I didn't know until I started checking on him. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, so if you're out there, a Kim Jong-un, happy birthday from the Little Snickers crew. Happy birthday, Kim. Uh, or is it Un? I think he likes Un. Cause, uh, That's like the first name, right? His dad was ill. The Kim family. And it's like they go, June. All right. Kim Jong. All right. <laughs> Kim Il-sung was his pop-up. Did you just reduce the Korean language to a fart? <laughs> it's, it's, it's really that simple, man. I might have just solved all the problems they have with that one fart. But uh, Kim Il-sung is his pop-up. Kim Jong-il is his daddy. And Kim Jong-un is our gentleman tonight. Okay. Never heard of the first, the granddaddy. Me neither. He was in power probably before... He was, yes. We were... Um, Conscious. He died in 1994. At that point, okay. Kim Jong Il took over, and in 2011, Kim Jong Il passed away. I'm so sorry. Oh shit! And uh, Kim Jong Un took over at that point. Mm. And this was a challenge because there isn't much information known about Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Il and Jake gone ill. <gasps> that little fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I hope you're feeling better, Jig Gun Ill. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many different uh different wives tales floating around out there about Kim Jong un. Uh however, I can believe just about most of the things that are uttered about him. Well, are you speaking of like the things that he creates for himself? Like the fact that he doesn't poop? He does. One thing that I learned about him is that he brings his own toilet with him when he travels. Wasn't there a thing that he doesn't poop? Like like the 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 whatever he calls himself, the emperor, the supreme no. emperor or whatever, like does not I went and doubt excrete. I wouldn't doubt that that's something he said at one time. Um, but he's flipping it on him. Now he admits that he shits. He is. Well, I don't know that he admitted this either, but there was a, a porta potty that follows him whenever he travels because he's paranoid about people confiscating his shit and analyzing to, fi to find out what's wrong with him physically. Oh no! What a what a terrible thing it would be if a doctor learned about his health. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but dude, uh, relative to your point about all the different names he has, here are some of the names that he goes by: the main leader of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, the leader of the party and the people. The New Start, The Brilliant Comrade, The Genius Among Others, The Marshal of North Korea. You sound like Wu-Tang nicknames. <laughs> <laughs> Just a, The Genius Among Others. <laughs> These are all ones that he made up for himself? Uh, either made up about him. People will or often... Like the ones right, that he's taken and It's stride. a cult of personality, so people are just falling all over themselves to give this guy adulation. There was a very cool Vice documentary. Did you ever see when Dennis Rodman went over to North Korea with the Globetrotters? Is that... Wait, that's recent, right? 2013. Wow. Oh, my God. Over 10 years ago at this point that Rod Rodman was... Rodman went there a few times, but I think that was his first trip. All right, Il was still alive then, right? No, he was dead. In 2010... Oh, 2013. 11 is when Kim Jong-il died. Okay. And so he went over with the Globetrotters to perform. Yeah, right? it was like a goodwill mission. Yeah, okay, I remember this. Um, what was the question that you just asked me before this? Um, where do my poopies go? They go into Kim Jong-un's mouth. So the toilet system leads to his palace, and he sleeps at night with his mouth open. You know how we get spiders in the mouth? <laughs> yeah. yeah, over eight people per year dump into <laughs> Un's <laughs> <Yes>. mouth. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, we don't mean that. Um, but yeah. I will be apologizing for any jokes we make. 
I don't want to. This is. This, I don't want to be in the bad favor of. I know the people's. I, fuck. I feel like we already are. If Kim Jong Un, if you're watching this, I apologize for John's behavior, and just know that the things that I'm saying right now are just. I'm just upset that my friend's got a little stomach bug. So please don't hold that against the supreme leader. And to be honest, me so sorry. I'm not the first one to make that joke. Uh, regardless of whatever jokes we make, please know that we would love you long time. But John, now we're rolling. <laughs> yes, I knew it. Uh, there was only uh, small bits of documentable information. The rest of it was just really fun stuff that I came across that has just been passed down the line. That are that are just very awkward elements of this little freak's personality. Yeah. Dude, there was something that, uh, before I get into Kim Jong-un, Kim Jong-il made up some very interesting rules for basketball in North Korea. They're both basketball fans. Kim Jong-il loved basketball, and Kim Jong-un is a massive uh, NBA fan. Mm-hmm. He loved Michael Jordan. Want to hear some of the, ru- the rules that uh, Kim Jong-il <laughs> I really do. <laughs> came up with? All right, dude. And this is for the Korean players that play yes, in it is. North right. Korea. So it's like, all right, a dunk is worth three points. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Pretty cool, dude. Um, a three-point shot is actually worth four if it's all net. And by the way, no one has ever dunked <laughs> over there. <laughs> dude, there is a massive guy, though. Really? In the uh, the Vice documentary, there's a guy. I don't know how far he made it in international basketball, but it's this massive North Korean fellow who he's looks like he's like seven and a half feet tall. God damn. He's probably dunking, but I can't imagine many other guys are. Yeah. A dunk with... Uh, Dunks are three. Three pointers that are, are nothing but net are four points. This one I like. A missed foul shot actually subtracts a point from your total. Well, he actually made basketball more interesting. I know. And this one is kind of funny because I'll bet when he thought of this role, rule, he was down by seven points and happened to score a last <laughs> second bucket. But if you score a field goal within the last three seconds of a game, it's actually worth eight points. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty clear what happened there. When the when the uh, Globetrotters came over, did they play the Koreans? The way so they had the Korean national team, and then the Globetrotters and uh, Rodman sat with Kim Jong Un. Mm-hmm. So the Globetrotters were actually the ones putting on the exhibition with the Korean national team. There's actually the vice reporter that was long for the documentation. He played in the game as well. Really, and they just went down the line. I could take this guy. You take this guy. And they were, like, giving out jerseys. They is split it, them up. Is it the Washington Generals that they play against or the Senators? The Generals, but they weren't playing them that right, day. Right, yeah, yeah. Do you think they were a little butthurt that they didn't get the invite? I would be. Like, dude, like, this we is what take we a beating do. North Korea. Yeah. <laughs> Although, North Korea beat Or do you think they might have been relieved that they didn't have to <laughs> go over there and fucking face these weird rules? Yeah, what if Kim Jong-un misinterpreted, like, we're going to beat the generals? <laughs> we're going to beat the living shit out of the generals. We always do, baby. Yeah, and they're just, they're still doing hard labor. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so th- his dad and his grandpa, their birthdays are national holidays. However, Kim Jong-un's actual birthday, it's undecided. It seems to be, people decide on January 8th as being his actual birthday, but Happy they, belated. Yes, but they don't know if it happened in either, if he was born on 82, 83, or 84. So he's around 40-ish. This is like a mysterious Hollywood starlet. I know. And you can't pin down her birth year. I know. He's so cool. Do they not keep records? How is this possible? I'm sure they do, but he can kind of do what he wants. Yeah. And it's the same way with his kids now. Like People seem to think that he's grooming his 10-year-old daughter to be his successor. Hmm. But nobody knows like her birth date. Um, they know that she has siblings. However, they're unsure of how many. There's one. There's one that's definitely a boy. There's one where the sex is not determined. <coughs> that don't make any sense. It's just they're so secretive. Right. Okay. So like, if he gets his lady pregnant, she just doesn't see the light of day until yes. years after that she's given birth. I guess. Yes. And much like you are so sorry, they are so secretive. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I like that little voice. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of their um, a lot of their background is shrouded in mystery, which kind of adds to like what makes him so cool in my eyes. Yeah, mystery really is compelling. It is. 
when he was a child, he went to school in Bern, Switzerland. Really? Yep. His father sent him there in the summer of 96. So he was on either a teenager or on the verge of becoming a teenager. Mm -hmm. And he showed up there, and some of the other kids uh, recalled him showing up. They were told that he was the son of a Korean diplomat. They didn't know that his dad was the uh, supreme leader. Yeah. And when he got there, he would go by the name Pak Un. Okay. Kind of cool name. I'm digging it. Yeah, and he would show up uh, every day. He would wear Adidas track suits and, like, the coolest fucking Nikes imaginable. Damn. Was he the first one to, like, study outside of the country? I don't know. See, they would they would occasionally leave the country. I know he, his brother, his dad, they would often use fake passports and fake names to visit Disneyland I across saw the that. world. It was, yeah. uh, they would often leave. I think they would go to Disneyland Paris and Disneyland Tokyo the most often. But did they did go to Orlando, right? I don't know that they did. Somebody okay. said somebody tagged me in something saying that they went to Disneyland and inferring that it was Disneyland California, but I don't know that that's okay. That's I feel like certain. I saw that in a tweet recently, and it has a picture of their fake uh, fake passports. Yeah. yeah, but they love some Disney, man. Who doesn't? They do love American culture, although there are a lot of restrictions placed on the citizens because they feel as though they're um, too Westernized. For instance, there was a point in. Uh, Fuck, when the fuck was this? Not too long ago, man. I can't remember when it was, but uh, people weren't allowed to have dogs, and dogs were confiscated from all the citizens because they felt as though dogs as pets were representative of Western decadence. Man. However, that implies some pretty sad stuff. Yes, and the implication is that they were going through a food shortage and that the dogs were possibly being used... Is that the um, impetus of the stereotype? I don't think so, because okay. that was fairly recent. It was 2020, okay. or when the dogs were confiscated. Well, I've known that stereotype for a lot longer than that. Maybe, so we're safe. <laughs> yeah, so 2020 was the dog confiscation. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ, it's so sad. Can so, you imagine coming door to door and collecting your pets? Uh, yeah, no. I just like, well, I actually we're already all going to dog. heaven today. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah Rut Row is right. We're all fucking dying today, Fudge. <laughs> yeah, we're all going to be licking peanut butter one way or another, brother. Oh, no. You're going to make <laughs> your dog lick it off your balls before Talk you die? Heaven. No, I'm, oh. he's got a Kong toy in heaven. Oh, okay. okay. And, uh, and your balls I'm just eating. happen to be in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jam, it's, it's a two-way Kong toy. <laughs> Man, I could do anything in heaven, but I'm making my balls. <laughs> <laughs> hey, heaven's whatever you want it to be. True, baby. man. I do. Yeah, I have put a lot of thought into heaven. I'm I'm constantly revamping it, though. Heaven is just a giant Planet Fitness judgment free zone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I would have gotten yeah. mighty judged if I was doing this on Earth, dude. Everybody in heaven is hitting their own personal lunk alarm when they see me get my peanut butter licked off my balls. It's like, dude, what the fuck do you think this is? Is this not heaven? <laughs> oh, am I not allowed to do that in heaven? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Maybe next time I'll cover the dog with my wings. Can I or can I do this here? How long is this is this argument going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, heaven is eternity. So, oh, uh, dude, I found out some funny shit about his time at his boarding school in Switzerland. Uh, the other kids, so his brother went there as, as well. His brother was tall and thin, so they would refer to the brother as the tall, thin one, and he would be referred to as the short, fat one. Oh, no. Yeah. That's rude. I know. Swiss I children. Feel bad. <laughs> you say it was Switzerland or Sweden? Switzerland. Huh. What kind of school? Was it like a boarding school? Yeah. Okay. So um, oh, one other funny tidbit about his time there was one of the one of his classmates said, he would get frustrated, and he would smash his head into a wall. Oh, no. Yeah. Man, you never want a guy like that in charge of an entire country. <laughs> <laughs> but he would, uh, he would play basketball, but more, more so he would play uh, PlayStation basketball. And eventually he'd just stop going to class. Yeah, and I mean, you can kind of do whatever you want. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool when you're a dictator's son, man. He stayed until Easter 2001, and then he came back to North Korea. He was there that long? Yep. Well, it's, it's five, years. five years. Yeah. yeah. I guess, yeah, that's a full high school experience, plus, yeah. plus a red-shirted freshman year. 
you better pray that you wrote something nice in his yearbook, man. Yeah. Uh, I guess keep in touch. <laughs> uh, have a kick-ass summer. <laughs> um, don't get too drunk. <laughs> he is a little drinker. Did you know that about don't, him? Don't um, feed your uncle to pigs. <laughs> oh, did you know that about Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was like fucking day one, right? Dude, there were... Um, it's not far off. All right, so we're getting close to that. But, dude, in uh, so two of his brothers, when it became apparent that Kim Jong-il's health was starting to fade, he had two other brothers. And the one brother was Kim Jong-chul, who was deemed too effeminate to hold the title of oh leader. Oh, my God. What kind of cake boy was this guy, dude? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too effeminate? Judged by who? Like the, the fucking round table of... No, I think it was just by Kim Jong-il. Okay. And oh then, my God, dude, your dad's saying you're too much of a girly boy to run the country. What do you have, like rosy cheeks? I've seen pictures of this guy. He doesn't look too effeminate, but then again, you know, pictures don't often do you justice. He just looks like a normal guy. I can picture, you know, you can picture him being sassy, but, you know, until you really hear somebody speak, you don't know. Yeah. That's one thing. I, I, I hadn't heard Kim Jong-un speak until I started looking him up this week. He's, he's got a cool voice. He kind of sounds like Jadakiss. Really? Uh, raspy. Huh. I guess just, I've never heard him speak either. Yeah. You typically only see pictures of him. And in pictures, he's usually got an open mouth smile because he thinks it's important to portray himself as the personification of joy. I kind of like that. I do too, man. Yeah. Dude, I, I love dictators so much. <laughs> I can't lie to you. They're so fucking cool. <laughs> But everything these fucking guys do. Um, yeah, uh, Kim Jong-nam was the other brother, and he got in trouble. He was trying to go to Disney Tokyo when he wasn't allowed, and he got caught trying to sneak into Japan with a fake passport. He was not allowed to even travel to Japan? He was not supposed to travel. So he was supposed to get uh, the consent of Kim Jong-il. He did not. Oh. So he he going to Disney without Kim Jong-il's blessing is like going AWOL. Getting your wife fucked by your brother. Okay, not exactly where I was going, but... <laughs> <laughs> but he quickly fell brains. out of favor. So at that point, Kim Jong-un became the top dog as far as succession. So one of them was a cake boy, and one of them tried to go to Disney without permission, and that's how Un... Yeah, isn't it crazy that the Disney adult is not the cake boy? <laughs> yeah, dude, how are they separate guys? <laughs> Um, I feel terrible telling you this, but in December of 2011, Kim Jong-il passes away. He passes away, and, um, dude, the, uh, in 2012, all right, one of his first acts is, like, he he quickly wants to, um, wants to um, develop the, uh, the missile program. So he's okay. working on long-range missiles, and... Uh, Which... No one can really tell them not to, right? They're not part of any union or UN, right? There are UN sanctions. Um, they put sanctions against him, and uh, one of their closest allies is China, but even China's telling him to chill the fuck out with a lot of this shit. Damn. And he eventually takes it so far that at one point, uh, China has to, they say, look, we're not sending you any seafood. Like, we're we're restricting uh, the the amount of coal we're sending you, the amount of minerals we're sending you, and also we're not sending you any more seafood because he will not chill out with the fucking with the fucking weapon shit. They get that much food imported that that would fuck them? Dude, there That's were points... Crazy. I don't know if, it, if it's still happening, but there are points where it's clear that people there are starving. Yeah. They get, they get food rations, and uh, I think each person gets like 10 ounces of food rations a day. It's by ounces... Dude, it's fucking nuts. And, like, he's got all kinds of shit. Like, he gets all kinds of, like, food and drink. He loves Johnny Walker Black Label. He loves Bordeaux. Uh, he loves Hennessy. Is the rest of the country even uh, have access to alcohol? I think they do, although it's it's very, like, it's like uh, peasant alcohol. Okay. They're not getting any Johnny Black. No, 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 blue. no. Yeah, they do have, like, normal jobs, too. Like, there's some, like, very strange jobs, like... They got, like, one of the weird jobs is, like, uh, traffic lady, where it's, like, you're you're essentially, like, a human traffic light, but they're all hot, and you have to be under 26 years old to be a traffic lady. My God, he's like Leonardo DiCaprio. He is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could be a barber. 
Oh, dude, this is pretty awesome. So, Wait, this is just like the options you have? Like, these are the few options you have Yeah, th- for there career? isn't a ton of shit to pick from. And most of it is, is is in service to the government. Sounds like they should be hiring fishermen if they need to rely on China for their all their seafood. I mean, they have access to the coast. I don't know, man. Why are they not doing their own fishing? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. <sighs> I feel like I should straighten a lot of things out if I went I over there. Too. I think just about all their money goes toward uh, military spending. <laughs> oh, man. That sucks. It, it is not good, man. It sucks for their citizens. It does. Yeah. Oh, uh, before I move on to something else, I want to tell you about some of the other jobs. Uh, barber is one of the most popular jar, uh, jobs, and there's only a select amount of haircuts that you can get. <gasps> so up until a certain point... It's like the military? I think it was expanded recently, but up until a couple years ago, there were only 28 approved haircuts. That's were, a lot. That's more than when no, there are it's, haircuts. It's, it was like 10 for men and 18 for women. Oh. I think now it might be up to like fucking 15 haircuts that a man can get. They're making progress. Yeah. And it's fluctuated between him asking people to cut their hair like his and then him saying nobody else besides him can have his haircut. That's what I was about to ask. Yeah. Are they allowed to get that? I don't know if they're allowed to get it now. But um, one other interesting element to about his haircut is that he cuts his own hair because he had an experience with a barber when he was a child that frightened him. So he does not trust barbers. I got to say, even though he's got a weird haircut, he does a good job on himself. His fade always looks sharp. Yeah. How the fuck is he doing that himself? Dude, um, our friend system of mirrors. Does he have dude? Tommy Pope has one of the nicest haircuts you'll ever see. Mm -hmm. And it always looks sharp. He cuts his own hair. I know. I just don't understand how you do the back. I don't either. It's the sides. I could probably figure out. I can barely sit still for another man to cut my hair. I could not imagine doing my own fucking hair. Looking in a mirror, I've tried it before. Like, you think, oh, move your hand this way. And it's like, ah, fuck, I moved it the opposite (laughs) way because of the mirror. Because everything's backwards. Um, Dude, some of the other jobs that you could have in North Korea, you could be a sculptor. And you're always busy. Seems like they need to cut that one out. Bro, there's over 34,000 statues of Kim Jong-un, Kim Jong-il, and Kim Il-sung throughout North (gasps) Korea. All right, well, now that makes sense. So there's always new statues popping up. And then there is a job of fashion police. So women are fashion cops, and they're tasked with making sure that other women in the country are living by the North Korean beauty standards. So they'll call you out if you, like, look too ugly? They will. You can't, uh, there's, your hair can only be a certain length. Your clothes have to be uh, cropped a certain way. You can't be too sexy. Although he does love his ladies, man. He's kind of working against his own interests there. I know, man. I just think he wants what he wants. I got to be honest with you, dude. I like a lot of these rules. I think wearing a uniform and everybody having the same haircut is kind of like the way to get shit done. Yeah, it is kind of cool. You don't got to spend time looking at like fucking your outfit, you know, or paying clothes. I did like that when I went to Catholic school. Yeah. I never had to worry about looking cool. Yeah. I feel like uh, maybe we just get our nose in the books. We could do a lot more good. <laughs> we weren't so worried about fashion. And that's coming from a guy who likes to dress. <laughs> I like to dress. I like different clothes. But I really would love to wear the same olive drab uniform every single day. You would not look good in olive drab. You need Why? color. These are olive drab. But it's like it's if you had to wear an olive drab jacket, it wouldn't match with your eyes. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for focusing on what is important. I will. John, when he came to power, all right, in 2012, he's hell-bent on developing uh, their missile program. And uh, the first the first missile that he's working on is a medium-range missile, and it's called the Typo Dong Missile. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Typo Dong 2 And it fails to launch Which is a massive disappointment Yeah I got a Typo Dong that fails to launch Every once in a while myself <laughs> <laughs> Hey what type of Dong fails to launch <laughs> yeah, My type of Dong And no one was mis- was more disappointed Than his wife <laughs> But uh, the Typo Dong 2 failed to launch So uh, unfortunately His secretary of ministry paid the price Oh, boy. Uh, or, or his uh, security minister paid the price. They strap him to the next rocket and set it off. Not far off. He was fl- flamethrowered. 
in 2012. In 2012. They flame throwered a Dude, guy to death. None of this shit is out of the question. And there's Ooh. video. All right. So at a certain point, Kim Jong-un's own uncle. Or no, his, uh, who was it? Fucking. Was it the uncle or his fucking brother? Yeah, right? Wasn't it? I, it was one of them, right? I think it was the, the fucking uh, Kim Jong. Yeah, it was the brother. It was the brother, the Disney brother, okay. Kim Jong Nam. So he was in an airport in Malaysia. And that's him. Look at him. The, <laughs> How you the Nam Deloise of North Korea. <laughs> that's Nam Deloise, baby. <laughs> Dude, Kim Jong Nam. There's video of him being attacked in the airport. A lady assassin comes up behind him and puts a, a wet towel over his face. It has a nerve agent on it. And he's savvy enough to understand that, like, something very fucked up just happened. And in the video, you see that happen. And then immediately after, he goes up to a security guy and says, look, a lady that I don't know just came up behind me, put a wet towel on my face, and I do not feel good. Whoa. Didn't they tell her she was, like, on a game show and it was a prank or something like that? Like I don't know. I think there's something like that that they she like didn't know that she was actually doing what she was doing. That would not surprise me. Wow. They, they someone I'm pretty sure this is the the case. It was the same show that shows uh toddlers doing their own grocery shopping. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that didn't kill him. That did kill him. <clears throat> oh, he died because of that? Kim uh Kim Jong Nam died because of that. In the video, you see him go into, like, the fucking hospital urgent care. And then they were transporting him to a hospital, and he died on the way to the hospital. Oh, boy. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know if this is just, like, I, I made this up, but was his body fed to pigs? Didn't he do something crazy like um, that? It's rumored that one of his uncles was fed to starving dogs. Oof. Oh, my God. Does not pay to be a relative of that family. So, could you imagine working your way up in the ranks of the North Korean government? Just how nervous you would be the higher you rise. Just like, oh my God, this is the level where they fucking, they kill people and feed them to dogs. When you asked how nervous I would be, I thought you were going to say to have to smear peanut butter on your balls and be thrown out to starving dogs. You're still thinking about that, huh? I cannot stop. <laughs> But he's developing missiles, and the goal is to to develop missiles that have uh, that have the range to reach the USA. Oh shit! That's so, a medium range. Oh, he's trying to develop long range. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Did you have something for us, uh, Jeff, about that assassination? Yeah. So I was right. Uh, two women, an Indian, Indonesian woman and a Vietnamese woman, uh, were charged with the murder, and they thought that they were taking part. In a TV prank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were both uh, eventually, like, let go. I think uh, in 2019, they did, like, very little jail time for it. Okay. Uh, because yeah, Ashton I mean, Kutcher came on, out and said it was actually yeah. just an episode of Punked. Thanks, guys. That was his last words. He's like, am I being punked? <laughs> <laughs> You're actually being murdered, bro. Um, But, yeah, they're, they're first focusing on uh, mid-range missiles, which... Uh, just probably go to like Japan, maybe mainland like, China. Like, uh, they have like uh, the longest distance I think they could travel is close to 1,900 miles, whereas long range missiles are uh, close to double that. Bam. Yeah, I mean, don't let the type of dong name fool you. Like, these missiles will get your ass. <laughs> Depends on what type of dong it is, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> you got long range dong, you got medium range dong, maybe you got micro, d <laughs> micro type of dong. <laughs> Yeah, Which maybe, apparently is way yeah. more common than we thought. Yeah, North Korea, we should hit them up and just be like, yeah, is anybody spearheading the micro dung, <laughs> micro dung <laughs> missile program? Because John and I would like to take part and take the initiative to really get that thing cooking for you. Like, we might just be able to, like, get the guys on the other side of the uh, 38th parallel, <laughs> the fucking guards that they got working there on the South Korea side. X-ray dong vision. <laughs> okay. I have it right now. You have X-ray dong vision. Yeah, you're you're doing it to me. <laughs> I don't think we're on the same page on this one. Why did your eyes roll back in your head when you saw my dong? Because I could feel the heat emanating off of it. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. This was kind of sweet. Um, 
the same year that uh, he flamethrowed that gentleman, he's trying to get a rocket-mounted satellite in the space in honor of his pop-up. Okay. Initially, it doesn't work, but eventually they are able to get it up in the space. No fucking way. Yeah. Now, what kind of earthly ordinance can stop them from doing that? Obviously, nobody can go in there and stop Actually, them. Actually, no, wait. I don't think they ended up getting it up in the space. Never mind. Jeff, can you double check that for me? Because I may have that information wrong. But I know he did attempt to get it up in the space in yeah. 2012 in honor of his grandfather. What's the nicest thing you've ever done for your grandfather? Returned his lawnmower after I was done with it, I guess. You didn't try to send it into orbit? I mean, that that lawnmower did have a fucking power cord that I had to plug it into, so it wasn't really convenient. Um, I'm sure I've done something nicer than that. Probably wrote him a little book, a little story. Pop-Ops would love any space-related shit. Uh-huh. Because I feel like the space program really got all of our grandfathers hard at one point. I still get hard for space. I'm going. Really? I'm going before I die, yeah. What are you going to do up there? Just look. It's for the view. I don't light it. They say if they got it up in the space, Jeff? It exploded 90 seconds after launch, God. I think. And that was their only attempt? I don't know. Launch and failure, yeah, it... it uh, it blew up. Uh, they they have done um, one recently. I saw. They're still fooling around over there. Oh, this was kind of funny. So in 2013, he's just obsessed obsessed with building up the military. In Panama, a ship that was bound for Korea is uh, is detained because they find out that North Korea is trying to sneak in two fighter jets on this fucking ship. And the way that they tried to sneak him in was they covered the fighter jets with bags of sugar. Oh, my God. They're so cute. I know. They're so <laughs> fucking cute, dude. It's like, how can you be mad at him? And also, where the fuck did you guys get all this sugar? Your fucking whole population oh, I- is starving. <laughs> You'd think you could turn this into a little bit of tasty treats for your... Citizens. Well, dude, that's part of like what's so fucked up about China just saying, look, we're not giving you any more food. And like part of that is that, uh, um, China says we're not giving you any more fucking seafood. And they also say that, um, they're banning the import of any materials that could possibly be made for weapons of mass destruction. Cause they know that's what he's doing. He's stockpiling all these things because he doesn't have many bargaining chips. So as he's collecting all these different weapons of war, um, he's eventually using them as collateral to just get whatever the fuck he wants. What but even they, China, what are they, what are they sending him that could be used for? Like, why are they sending him weapon materials? I don't. Well, more recently, they've developed a uh, an alliance with Russia, and Kim Jong Un has been giving Russia weapons in their war against Ukraine. Okay, so. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Russia is just giving him whatever the fuck he wants to make his nuclear weapons. I know. I don't know if he still is, but for a while he claimed that uh, he was developing a hydrogen bomb, mm-hmm. which is like 100 times worse than a fucking atomic bomb. Yeah. So um, hopefully they were able to put the kibosh on that. But um, yeah, right now, um, this week he was back in the news because it seems as though they're kind of uh it looks as though war might pop off between north and south korea and unfortunately the the us has had troops in south korea korea doing uh military training exercises recently yes oh boy yeah didn't they test weapons last year as well well that's one of the issues that like he's had that like when he wants to get somebody's attention right he'll test something fucked up yeah and everybody's just like, dude, chill the fuck out, please. Like, I like, think it went into, like, Japan's waters, territorial waters, even. Yeah, most of the time, it's either he's uh, fucking with Japan, uh, he's fucking with South Korea, um, or he's claiming that they d- developed something that could reach U.S. soil. Yeah. Do they have an actual, like, is every guy there in the military? Like, every military no. age man? Okay. Not every guy is. I don't know if they have to serve some kind of military duty, mm-hmm. but... Um, I would just be guessing if I gave you an actual number as to what their military was. But any kind of footage you see from there, there's always just massive amount of troops just marching through the fucking streets. Yeah. Yeah. 
Doesn't you guys should look up the uh, video of the North Korean army uh, marching to staying alive. <laughs> it's an actual video, and it that's goes, what they were it actually playing. Or no, just no, no. Okay. Somebody synced up to it, but it's it's pretty funny video. Well, he is a music guy. Like he he plays a large part in selecting their pop bands. Like he, there's a huge emphasis on on. Um, in his mind, it's artistic, but he's essentially telling them what to create, uh-huh. what to do, what to dance. What he's to the Lou Perlman of K-Lop, yeah. He's like he's North like the Korean. Simon Cow of fucking North Korea. Yeah. And that's, unfortunately, that's a lot of how uh, a, a big way of, a common way for him to pick women that end up belonging to his harem. They call it uh, his pleasure squad. No way. Is he'll hold these, like, tryouts for these pop bands. And his wife was actually, like, one of these chicks. She was, like, a cheerleader slash singer in a, in a pop band in North Korea. And I know she doesn't really have a choice in the matter, but his wife is okay with him slamming other broads. Absolutely not, I'm sure. Yeah. And dude, um, it seems you think she she married for love or do you think she married to not get her head cut off? (laughs) I think she married for the horses. Where it's hard it's hard to fault her for that. But yeah, unfortunately it seems like uh he also likes him young. And I'm not referring to a Korean surname. So not cream of some young guy. Yeah, um, um Young is not a beautiful thirty-two-year-old woman. <laughs> he likes Um Young, and and do you know what his age difference between him and his wife is? Is she like I don't know, man. Six years, six years. She's thirty-four. If he, that's if we're saying he's forty, that's appropriate. That is appropriate. And he's got three kids with her. Okay, and I me- I think I mentioned his ten-year-old now seems to be his likely successor. Which, and that's the daughter. Yeah. And he's got a sister, too. For a while, she was seen in public with him a lot. So people assumed that maybe she would take over. But it seems weird now that he's taking his ten-year-old daughter out with him and showing her off more often. And that would be only in the instance that he died before her. That would be the only way that she got power, right? Mm-hmm. The sister? Yeah. But he's a... Uh, He's obese. He's like 5'5 five, five and over 300 pounds. Is he really? Yeah. That black truly is slimming on him. He doesn't look that fat. It is. He's always like, he went from wearing like, I think they call it a Mao suit, which is like the dressy dictator outfit. Mm-hmm. And then um, he got a, a little a little more formal. And then within the past few years, you've seen him in leather jackets pretty often. Whoa. There's a funny picture of him and his 10-year-old daughter both wearing leather jackets. Oh, they're touring like a weapons facility. So cute. It is. Even though they're touring a weapons <laughs> facility. <laughs> yeah, cute little thing, man. Oh, my God. He's like Neo in the Matrix. Look at that thing. He does not look that fat. That one he does, but in the big one on the right. He's looking okay. Nah, he's a little tubby. <laughs> I wonder if that haircut is strategic to make him seem slimmer. You know how it's boxier on the sides? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's probably doing some favors to his round face, but mm. it ain't hiding that fat paunch, brother. <laughs> but yeah, we mentioned the uh, the assassination of his brother in February of 2017 in... Uh, August of 2017 is when China says, look, we're not sending any more seafood. Like, you have to comply with these weapon sanctions or else, man. And in uh, fucking, what was it? Oh, yeah, early in 2017. Do you remember he had that Twitter beef with Trump? No. Yeah, Trump called him Little Rocket Man. Now I remember. How could I forget such a hilarious little term? And when I read it, I misread it. Apparently, the word is pronounced dotard or dotard. Kim Jong-un referred to Trump as a dotard, but it reads as dotard. <laughs> Which is a very funny thing to call Kim Jong-un. It, it, no, Kim Jong-un was calling Trump a dotard. Uh, well, either way, I think that can go back and yeah. forth and be appropriate. Yeah, but they ended up making up, and in uh, 2018, they end up having a meeting. Did Trump go there? Yeah, so initially they went to, uh, they met in Singapore. And then Trump actually ended up crossing over into North Korea to shake hands with him. Mm -hmm. And 2018 was an interesting year for him because not only did they have that meeting and and, um, relations seemed to settle a little bit, but also at the Olympics, which were in South Korea, they North Korea and South Korea, they marched as one, as a unified Korea. 
So people were hopeful that that meant that he was going to like, you know, start to comply with what the international community wanted. And then in turn, like the North Korean people would end up benefiting from this, but it doesn't last long. Did they have athletes from North Korea in the Olympics? I don't know what they had or who they had there. Um, if they marched together, yeah, I would assume that everybody marching is an athlete other than uh-huh. the person. I think the person carrying the torch and carrying the flag might not have to be an athlete. I think the torch bearers can be dignitaries. Yes. But I think if you're marching in the opening ceremonies, other than having that flag or that torch, you're an athlete. There was a uh, a kid, I think he was in my older sister's grade. Mm-hmm. in nine, Was it 96 they were in Atlanta? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because you know how they take the torch like all around the country. Yeah, he got to run it for like a half mile or a mile. Oh, that's pretty cool through the neighborhood by the school. How Very cool. You? I didn't even understand the significance, but I was yeah. like, oh, everybody fucking loves this guy right now. Mm-hmm. I don't think I was jealous. I'm not a jealous guy, Mike. I at that age for that kind of honor, I would be jealous as shit. Nah, I probably thought I would trip on my own fucking two feet. <laughs> like, like, ac- <laughs> to accidentally light Muhammad Ali on fire. <laughs> That was the year. Yeah, he's got Man, Parkinson's he... and fucking third degree burns. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, tr- uh, during this time, like Trump's like working with him. They're trying to come to some kind of nuclear agreement. But eventually talks fall apart. And then the unification with South Korea, all that shit falls by the wayside too. And then uh, that's when they start to form the alliance with Russia. And now... Americans aren't allowed to travel to North Korea now. Mm. However, Russians are encouraged to travel there. Is that true? Yes. How many other countries are allowed to travel there? I don't know. But um, wasn't there just a, a U.S. soldier that like crossed the uh, the demilitarized dude, zone line in 2016? There was a college kid named Otto Warmbier. Warm beer? You heard me right. No. Yeah, Otto Warmbier, he was a college kid. So he was traveling to China, and he was like, oh, fuck, maybe I'll just go into North Korea, dig around a little bit. He went out one night, and he was staying at this hotel. Um, This fucking hotel is strange because you can't go to the fifth floor. If you take the elevator, there's no fifth floor button. You have to, like, access it via the stairwell. Mm -hmm. And he made his way to the fifth floor. He came home one night. I think he had been drinking. And there were propaganda posters lining the hallways. And he ripped one of them down. And um, he was arrested. The next day, I think, his group was leaving to go to China. And uh, he was arrested at the airport. His friend said two guys just came up and asked if he was who he was and said, you have to come with us. And he just assumed it was something stupid. And they're just like, yeah, they're just going to let me know. They kept him there. They kept him detained for 17 months. Wait, what country was he from that he was allowed in North Korea? He, at the time, Americans could go there. Oh. And as a result of what happened with him, that's when, that's when you couldn't go to North Korea anymore. No shit. So this was 2016. He was there for 17 months. And, um, yeah, it's fucked up, man. You could see video of him, like, pleading, like, look, this was so stupid. I really regret it. Please just let me go. Yeah. And they were negotiating for his release. Then finally, at around the 17 month mark, he lapses into a coma while he's being imprisoned. And at that point, they're just like, oh, yeah, you can take him. He's good to go now. He's brought back to America and uh, he's immediately brought to the hospital and uh, there's nothing they can do. It seems as though there was some kind of nerve agent used on him. Mm-hmm. And it was just, they just couldn't, they just could not bring him back. His parents eventually. They agreed to take him off life support. And at that point, they're just like, no Americans are going back to fucking North Korea. Yikes. Let that be a lesson to you propaganda poster ripper downers. It's hard not to tear those things down, man, especially after you had a few. Try to walk past the poster. (laughs) Dude, I once stole, there's a, what is the name of that movie? Ronald Reagan with the chimpanzee. Um, That time for Bonzo? Yes. All right. I performed at a bar, I think it was in Lansdale, and they had this framed photo of Ronald Reagan baby fodle, baby uh, feeding. bottle feeding a chimpanzee in a diaper. And after the show, I had 100 beers, and I'm like, I need to get this picture. So I'm trying to like get it off the wall while fucking karaoke's going on. I realize this thing's fucking nailed to the wall. 
and uh, it gets to the point where I'm parallel with the fucking wall, and uh, or perpendicular with the wall, and I'm pulling it and pulling it. And then finally, I'm able to break this thing free of being fucking nailed to the wall. I took it home that night, and unfortunately, like whoever was locking up for that night realized their Ronald Reagan picture was missing. So they called the guy who organized the show. They're like, look, if he brings it back, there's no issues. But if, if he doesn't bring the picture back, we're going to have an issue. Was there video of it? There was. So the next day, I had to drive back to fucking Lansdale and return this this Ronald Reagan picture to the bartender. Jesus Christ, dude. And to their credit, they didn't ask any questions. They just said thank you, and we both kept it moving. And that's when you quit drinking? No, <laughs> okay, baby. Another, you, you, another you fifteen lower. years after that, baby. <laughs> That's most people's rock bottom. Driving mm-hmm. back to the bar the day after to return a bedtime for Bonzo poster. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, baby, that was my rock top, baby. You're like limbo, baby. You can uh-huh. always go lower. <laughs> but yeah, um, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, January of 2024, things seem to be escalating between North Korea and South Korea. Which um, would seem to be really bad. I have an update on that leather. Uh, they've actually banned leather jackets now because, because he likes people were, were copycatting him and he, and he didn't like that. Like- it's so, the most sincere form of flattery. Why would he not like that? Because they probably look much better than him. Yeah, maybe. When when everybody is dressed like a, pe- a peasant and you're the only guy with a leather coat, yeah. chicks are going to look at you differently. How are they even getting leather coats? Like, Like... They were importing it. They really? were importing fake leather into, and like it was like being people were making them in their homes. Oh I was just reading God. this article about it. They were imp- making them in their homes and then selling them at like the markets and stuff illegally. They're black market leather jackets. I don't know if it was illegal. Like they were at like r- before he banned them. I guess like you could sell whatever you wanted uh-huh. at these markets, and it was like the big. Fashion craze was wearing leather jackets like him, and he said, "No, no more." Kind of a dickhead move. I don't know, man. He does look cool in that thing. Oh, did we talk about the interview? Not yet. Oh yeah. So, uh, uh, Seth Rogen and uh, James uh, Franco, mm-hmm. 2014, they made the interview, and North Korea launched a cyber attack towards Sony. Yes, to prevent its release. Yeah, what did what was the cyber attack? Did they like release unreleased movies or something? Like I think it was personal information related to Sony executives, maybe. Okay, I think it was a ransomware attack, and that's Sony Pictures, right? That's not like Japanese Sony, right? Yeah, it's the movie support. studio. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was a big Hufflepuff blue uh, when that happened. Like they were, he was basically threatening war. Essentially, if they release the movie, right? Yeah, I mean, it speaks to the fucking leather jacket predicament. Yeah. It's like, you cannot make me look a way that I don't want to. and You not, cannot look better than me. Um, oh, dude, I don't think I mentioned this, but um, he holds his grandfather in high regard. Obviously, he was trying to get a fucking rocket-mounted satellite in space. <laughs> but uh, at 27, he had plastic surgery to look more like his grandfather. Really? Yep. And then he's also gradually been shortening his eyebrows to look more like his grandfather as well. Gradually. (laughs) Taking up half a centimeter every year. Oh, do do they look shorter? I didn't even notice. Wow. (laughs) Must just be my grandfather in me. (laughs) Pause. (laughs) Dude, he, um, I think I have all the shit that I learned about North Korea this past week. Uh, the basketball sh- shit really stuck with me because yeah. I think that would, that would honestly, I think those would improve the game. I like the minus one point for free throws missed, mm-hmm. and I like the eight point basket when there's less than three points left on the clock. That one I don't, I'm not a big fan of. All right, do you like the dunk being worth three points? I think different dunks could be worth different amounts. All right, and what about the three pointer counting as fours as long as it's nothing but net? I like that. I like promoting accuracy. Mm. Nothing but net. I think there's potential for that being worth more. Mm-hmm. But I think you're right about the eight points in the last three seconds was he was just down, down by, by seven. seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope, under three seconds. Mm-hmm. That's worth eight. That's mm-hmm. worth eight. Just made the rule up now. 
Fuck you, Richard. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, go cry to your fucking mom. I'm going to send you some fucking wild dogs to your parents' house. Yeah, see how you like that. Oh, wild yeah. dogs couldn't drag me away. <laughs> he loved, uh, oh, dude. So, related to his Pleasure Squad girls. In t- Is that really what he calls them? I don't know that's what he calls them, but that's what the press calls them. The Pleasure Squad. I know. It does sound like a Lucy Lou movie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in 2016, he spent over three million dollars on lingerie for his pleasure squad. Do you know how many members there are? I don't know. Man, that's a lot of fucking lingerie. It's a lot of pleasure. It's a lot of squad. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude! Uh, you think they were sexy in their lingeries? I don't know, man. It's I can't. I don't know that you could be sexy and scared. Yeah, those are two difficult things to pull off together. Yeah, if you're, like, cruising past the fucking, what is it, the red light district in Amsterdam, like, those are sexy ladies. You don't think they're scared? I don't. I think they can make a lot of money, Yeah, and I think people treat them nice. So there's approximately 2,000 women and girls in, in this, and they're called the Kipumjo, which translates to Pleasure Squad. Oh, no. There's 2,000 of them. All right, 2,000, lingerie for 2,000 ladies. Maybe you're running up a couple mil there. That, that yeah. adds up. But, dude, I don't know, man. I mean, has he had sex with all 2,000 of them? I don't. I doubt that anybody's on, like, a 10-day contract and doesn't get in the games. That's a lot of guys pushing some numbers, dude. There's no way he can fuck that much. I'm sure. No it, way. I, I don't know that he fucks that much, but I think he... A lot of hands business, mm-hmm. you know? He's probably looking at a few of them while he's... Having sex with another one, maybe? I don't know. Wish they weren't so damn mysterious. There's so much I want to know about this fella. Try to go there. Maybe you could get Russian citizenship so you'd be allowed in. Maybe. And then, Why don't you uh, try to do it? I'll do it if you do it. Here's one thing that I think you would like. Just it. like your boy joined the fucking Marines, so you did it too? I'll go again. <laughs> but, dude, there was something. It made me remind you. R- reminded me of you because I know how you like to have a good time. But uh, relative to the Vice documentary... The, the correspondent was like, yeah, when we got to the arena, um, or after the arena, there was an open bar, and uh, I went up to the open bar, and I got a uh, Johnny Walker Black, which is one of Kim Jong-un's favorite drinks, mm-hmm. and he's like, uh, I drank it, and then I saw Kim Jong-un enter the arena, so I stopped to cheer like everybody else, and then he was asked to go to his seat, and he left his drink behind, so uh, he said... Before he even sits down, there's a guy bringing his drink to him, and then another guy brought the bottle, the rest of the bottle of Johnny Walker Black to him. That's nice. It is very nice. Black or blue? Black. Blue is the higher level yeah, one, he right? He wasn't allowed to access the blue. Yeah. That's just for Kim. But no, uh, Kim Jong-un prefers Johnny Walker Black. Really? Yeah. What a simple man with simple taste. He likes uh, Swiss cheese as well. He loves prosciutto. Okay. Uh... He smokes uh, Marlboros, and he also smokes uh, these these gold leafed cigarettes. He smokes. Yeah. Oh, he smokes like a like a like a maniac on fire. Okay, it took you a while to make something it did. up. <laughs> when there's plenty of other <laughs> phrases to choose from. Uh, have, have you seen images of him smoking? I, I have. There I are a lot of images of him smoking. Does he look fucking cool? Is he squatting while he does it? No, he's always like Asian he's always, style. He's always sitting while he's smoking. Uh, The pictures I've seen of him smoking, he's typically um, at the head of a table, and they always want to make it seem as though like he's giving out directives. He's always uh, either just giving out directives or he's like open mouth laughing. In all the photos. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, he's cheesing there, baby. I don't like sitting while I smoke. I like standing. (laughs) <laughs> Come on, man. How do you stay mad at this guy? <laughs> I can. I love him. I want to go there. I want to meet him. I want to hang out. What do I got to do to get him to like me? I'll bet if you brought him some ACG gear, he would be into Thank that. You. Yeah. I need to get... Well, first we need to infiltrate Rodman. He's the key to all of this. Mm-hmm. Once we get the Rodman. Dude, uh, what if uh, if he met you, I'll bet he would get blue contacts and he would demand that you had your eyes lasered so that your eyes were now brown. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to go there. I don't want my eyes lasered brown. It's an open bar, though. I'm there, brother. (laughs) 
shit in my fucking eyes. I don't care. <laughs> Put 20 on the bar. Let's keep them coming. Is there any place fucked up that uh, it's a dream of yours to travel to? Uh, what do you mean any place fucked up? Like a singular bar in a, in a town? Like North Korea, or last week we learned about Iraq, which I think would be very cool to visit. I don't really want to leave the country. Um, I want to go to Tombstone, Arizona. That would be cool. That would be neat, man. Yeah, I want to. I don't know why I immediately thought of like drinking in a saloon when you asked me if there's anywhere fucked up that I want to go to. Uh, I don't know. Is Nepal fucked up? I don't know. I want to go to Everest Base Camp, and I think you have to fly there. You could go on the ride at Disney's Animal Kingdom. That'll make you feel like you're right there. Uh, Everest Expedition? Yeah. Yeah. Is that the cool. one where it, like, it looks like it's going to end? The yeah. railroad track is going to end, and yep. you go back? Very cool ride, man. Yeah, I'll check that out. Animal Kingdom's wonderful. You ever been there? Uh, I feel like I went when they first opened and did the... Do they still have a safari there? Or it might have been at Six Flags. Does Six Flags have a safari? They do. Um, I bet Animal Kingdom's got it. I never took the safari if they do have it, but I remember. It's the best. I love Tell it. Tell me about it. Oh, it's so cool. And the safari? It's, yeah, it, it, uh, it's called like Harambe, and I was there like right after uh, Harambe died, so oh. that's how I remember. Was that, it named after what, him? No. Just I think the Harambe mean, means something in like Africa. Uh-huh. Dead gorilla. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> God is his <laughs> gorilla with exploded head. It's really, it is really cool. I've actually got a shit ton of pictures and videos on my phone. And I'll show you. I'll do what that. kind of animals are we talking? Giraffes. They got them all. They got giraffes, elephants, lions. They got all. Of them. Is everything uh, behind cages? What no. comes? What comes up to the car? I've seen. I think like ostriches come up close. Monkeys? Um, no. They got hippos. They don't really get that close. I think the close, closest thing is like you get close to like the giraffes. Okay. I would like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Would you give him a little kiss if he put his lips in there? Yeah. Give him like a little carrot or something meat out of my mouth. Yeah. What, and, what would you do if you were on the safari ride and uh, you know how giraffes like they stick their tongue out? What would you do if your wife tongued them? <laughs> Probably get extra horny. Probably uh, find somewhere for the kids to go and occupy their time while me and old giraffe mouth <laughs> is snuggle under the covers for a little bit. I would find it hard not to because you see how they're sticking their tongues at me and I would have a hard time keeping my tongue in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> You look Dude. back and she's jerking the tongue. Up. Whoa, lady, <laughs> what, what the no. fuck? There's kids back here. <laughs> it must have been the Six Flags Safari because I remember like monkeys coming on the car and like doing like putting their mouth on it and like licking the window yeah, and those, doing very funny things. Those are Jersey animals, man. <laughs> yeah, they're not. It wasn't even a safari. Yeah. <laughs> Those are called pine barren squirrels. <laughs> Where the fuck is there? Like, I guess it's not that big of a drive through for that. Safari, but like, where the fucking Jersey is there a safari? I can't picture it. Like, I haven't been to Six Flags since I, I was a been kid. There forever. When yeah. I, I, I've, it was so long ago that I was at Six Flags that I'm sure there were white people inside those costumes. Okay. <laughs> you know, now you can tell that that everybody inside those costumes is not white because of the style that they be walking with. Yes. Yes. All right. And you can't, you ain't never seen a fucking white bitch twerk like that. <laughs> and I don't want to see a white Tweety. <laughs> I can't wait to go back to Disney, man. You going this year? I am. I think I'm just going to do like a, maybe a three day trip with my wife one weekend. And will you hit the Animal Kingdom? I don't know. I really enjoyed it the last time. The first time I went, I wasn't into it. But when we went last year as a family, I loved Animal Kingdom. And part of it was we went super early, and we were able to go on shit. As soon as we got off, we were able to get back on, and that was part of why it was cool. Did you do all the Avatar stuff there? 
Oh. We did the uh, the floating thing. Yeah, I, I don't like know the, the river. names of shit. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. That was cool. Yeah, the the main ride there, if you go back, uh, is like the, it's like some kind of like, you're like hawked ho- on one of those like uh, flying things from the Dragon movie. Dragon guys. Yeah, I didn't do that. I, I wanted to do that. It's but. intense. It's cool. It's like you feel like you're actually in it and like oh, I would love moves that shit, like, if, like it's breathing. That it's, sounds fucking awesome. It's pretty I've cool. I've never heard of that. It's strippy. Damn. Dude, we got really drunk drinking around the world and then went to Epcot or uh, Animal Kingdom for dinner. And went on that nice. uh, is, is a cool experience. Multi day park hopper pass. Oh yeah. Did, uh, did you feel sick at all? No. I. It, it's cool. They like throw like water at you. Mm-hmm. Like it's like kind of like soaring. Yeah. Kind of like an yeah. updated version of soaring. Okay. Oh, I love soaring so much, man. Um, is Animal Kingdom? I feel like I've heard that it's like more adult style thrill rides as opposed to the other parks. Is that the case? It's more. Um, there's more detail put in the Animal Kingdom than any of the other parks. Really? Like the other Animal Kingdom feels more uh feels like there's many more nooks. Mm-hmm. It's 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 more difficult to just find your way around whereas I think with Epcot it's just you walk in and, and then you do a loop, loop and yeah. then you're you're out. Yeah. But yeah, one of the great things about Animal Kingdom is there's just so much to occupy your senses. Uh-huh. You could it's very easy to tell that it's the the most recently built park. Right. I think California Adventure at Disneyland in California is like was built to be more of an adult, like big kids style yeah. stuff. Um, I feel like I heard the same thing about Animal Kingdom, but it could have been a dream. Could have been something I heard when I was blacked out. You know how you can't ever tell the dream between uh, the difference between blacking out and a dream. I do, and and to that point, I just want to ask you at. Uh, to California Adventure being more adult themed, is it true that they have Mickey, Pluto, Donald, and Minnie beating your ass like you're Rodney King? I tell you what, give me a thousand guesses. That's not where I thought you were going with it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> well, we could always make a new park. I think I. Might not want to go to that park. You don't have Disney fever? I don't want to go to the park where you have the the characters beating you like Rodney King, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fever that I do not have. Dude, what if like that was like uh, <laughs> the defense is like, uh, that was their defense. It's like uh, the Rodney King had Disney fever. Like there's, you've ever seen somebody with Disney fever, you know what you're up against. Yeah, and they do need to get Stopped. That's all. And then I think uh, we'll change the subject. Right. <laughs> that was stopped. S T O P P E D. <laughs> Just so everybody is clear about that. Um, no, I have Disney fever. I'm in a position right now though where I can't uh, decide. Like if I if we had the fucking grandparents babysit the kid. Mm-hmm. So me and Maggie could go to Disney World. Mm-hmm. I think everybody would look at us kind of weird. Your baby's not going to remember Disney World. Yeah. So That's there's no I'm point saying. in taking a baby to Disney World right now. But I think if we left the baby behind, we should go somewhere else. I don't know, man. I think Disney is primo adult fun without kids. Yeah, maybe. It's kind of like hitting dingers at a t-ball field. Okay. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe we will. Or do we... Does everybody go to Disney and then you just have somebody watch the kid while you're there? So many know. questions. No, nah, it's better without... A, better without a, a really little kid. I think wait until your daughter's like maybe like five or so. Yeah. As to where like she can remember this shit and really have a nice experience. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's just it's just going to be tedious. Yeah, maybe. Tedious was one of the dwarfs, correct? Yes. All right. Keep this in mind, too. If if uh, you and the missus ever want to go with uh, Jamie and I to Disney, I'd be happy to do that. With no kids? Yeah. Un- unbelievable. <laughs> A double date to Disney World, leaving four children behind. <laughs> 
How cool would it be? We'll bring the kids back something. We'll all bring back the kids like mugs with like our log flume <laughs> picture on it. <laughs> Just FaceTiming with fucking Dumbo in the background. We're having <laughs> such a fucking good time without you. No, I can't hate on a man. My parents used to go away without us. Not to Disney World. No, to uh, what is that creepy old fuck motel? Like sandals. No, there's man. What is it? There's a, a dove of the end of the dove. The end of the dove is where they used to go to fucking yeah, bang it out. And I uh, knew you were there was say that. no reason for them to tell me they were going to the end of the dove. <laughs> yeah, they could have just said we're going to the Poconos. <laughs> yeah, man. Like what the fuck, man? <laughs> That's how young you were when you learned what that was. I, I didn't was. learn what that was until like a couple of years ago. Well, um. I did have a weird aunt who seemed to relish in, like, exposing me to fucked up things. So, I think uh, she She just, told you? She wanted to hammer it home. My parents let it be known. Like, my dad was like, this is where we're going. Uh-huh. But I think my it was my aunt who explained what it was. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, this is not something that needed elaboration. Yeah. How old do you think you were? Like Single digits, man. Jesus Christ. Insane. Dude. Yeah. Just when you're learning about sex. Yeah, I don't. Now you figure out that your parents are going to paying for it. Like I, I can't have a Nintendo, but enjoy a fucking a heart shaped hot tub Uh and a vibrating bed. (laughs) Hope you don't run out of quarters, you fucking piece of shit. (laughs) Yeah, I got the fever, baby, and it's not going away anytime soon. Look how carefree he is. I can't stop looking at him. I dude. know. How he, long? How long do you think we'll have this angel on Earth? I don't think he's long for this world. You think? He'll, well, how do you know how old Il was when he died? I don't know. I would say sixties, maybe. He was What's, at least like an older man. Yeah, he didn't yeah. look like this. He he was liver spotted up. So if that guy's forty. He's got another couple decades in him. Three hundred and a smoker. Yeah, and he's five five. <laughs> Come on, Jeff, bringing me right back down to reality, dude. <laughs> yeah, he does seem to be smoking a lot, and he's boozing. You think he only smokes when he boozes? Nah. You think he's a full timer? You think he wakes smoker, up and baby? Oh, dude, uh, the people they yell out something very funny when he appears. Oh, they scream, "Live ten thousand years." Whenever he comes past them. Yeah. Yeah, live forever, you piece of shit. I hope you watch everyone you've ever loved die. <laughs> How old was he, Jeff? He was 70. That's pretty good. Yeah. But he 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 wasn't fat. Like, he was a normal guy. Mm-hmm. Probably wasn't as big of a smoker either. Yeah, Jung Un looks like a fucking Prujudo king. <laughs> He's a Prujudo king of Princeton, New Jersey. Man, you, you just want to kiss those wiggly cheeks. Well, brother, we're in the come quad hour. What is on your brain? We sure are. Um, just this is my last. I'm going to wear a different hat every episode mm-hmm. of this year. I'll see how many hats I have by counting how many episodes I last. Wow. And I figured I'll get my Eagles hats out of the way. Mm-hmm. So I'm remembering the good times with this hat. Yeah. When we were in the Super Bowl. Just last year. Yeah. We were on our way just last year, man. Things were really clicking for that team last year. Yeah, what man. happened? They yeah. didn't, they only had, like, a few good games, period, this season. I don't even think they were that good. It's, it's like, a miracle they got 10 wins in, or 11 wins I in know. the first place. They won a bunch, and it were, there was always this internal debate with, like, all right, that wasn't a fun game, but I guess right. the objective is to fucking win. Yeah, yeah. It's I like mean, they, they were all won. ugly losses or ugly wins. But, like, sure, yeah, wins are good, but when you're still not congealing and playing well Nothing together, works, you man. know? It's almost as though, like, you you would have been okay with a loss where they were cooking and they just got outgunned. Yeah. Where it's like, all right, at least something looks good, but none of this shit ever looked good no. all year. What a, what a strange season. It, it's the strangest season that I've ever watched the Eagles really was. compete in. Really was. Huh. I am pulling for uh, either the Lions or the Bills. I would like the Lions Bills Super Bowl matchup. Yeah, and I, I hope the Bills cool. win it. I'm fine with either of them. Have the Lions ever won? I don't know that they have, but they have had a championship. 
fairly recently. They had a bunch of Stanley Cups. They had an NBA championship. Oh, non NFL, non Lions. No, no, no. Yeah, but the Bills. There's literally nothing there besides the Bills. There's no other sports team in Sabers. Oh yeah, the Sabers and the Sabers made the final in '95. Or no, wait, '99. Yeah, and they got <sighs> Dominic Hasek. Yeah, that whole they got kind of boned because decade. Brett Hull kicked the fucking puck in. Probably shouldn't have counted, but um, why wouldn't that count? If you if you deliberately and he was in the crease. What's the crease? The crease is like the area, the goalie's area. That little semicircle. It, it's colored in. Yeah. So it probably okay. shouldn't have counted. However, they went nuts, and I think they were afraid to call it back because everybody was already celebrating. If you're outside of the crease, are you allowed to kick it in? You can't deliberately kick a puck in. If it really? deflects off of you, that's fine. Yeah. Huh. Learn something new every day. Yeah, man. Um. So, yeah, I hope Buffalo wins because those people need it. I think both cities could use it. Oh, no doubt. Man. Without a doubt, yeah. yeah. I think just both of those teams, I mean, yeah. It would be a shame to see Buffalo go to another Super Bowl and not win. Mm-hmm. Oh, devastating. Could you imagine four yeah. fucking Super Bowl losses in a row? But the fact that uh, the Lions won their first playoff game in, like, what, 32 years or something like 1991, that? 1991, I think it was. Yeah, that's pretty insane. But, yeah, yeah I'm hoping that the Chiefs don't make it. Yeah, I'm really tired of them. I don't hate the Niners, to be honest with you, but it would be cool if the... Lions beat them to get into the Super Bowl if that comes down to it. Yeah, I'm not a Niner fan, man. But oh wait, after no, all playing. that whining they did last yeah, year, I cannot the stand up, the, Who, the Niners. Niners. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're they're like were they whining about getting beat by the Eagles? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. What was the whine about? About uh, not Purdy. Yeah, when he got Purdy hurt. being hurt. So oh my god, yeah. It's like, dude, what do you want? Okay, yeah. Do you want free points for your quarterback to yeah. get hurt? Well, apparently they did. Um. Okay. Well, I don't like the Niners anymore. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, I just, I had a couple of autographed Steve Young jerseys when I was a kid, so. He's a very cool guy. Yeah, I was in the, in the, in the Niners fever when they got one for the thumb. What he went to Kahunaville in Delaware. What? And was signing autographs, bought a couple jerseys, still got the hat. Whoa, Should man. Should I wear the hat? That would be weird. Yeah, right? that, no, that'd be cool. Wearing an autographed Steve Young hat? I think that would be very cool. Think. I know. But I don't like the Niners now. But it's a Steve Young hat. What if it gets rained on or dookied up? You could always get him to sign it again. <laughs> yeah, I'll just... Excuse me, Mr. Young, can you sign this dookie hat? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Remember when we met at Kahunaville? You were staring at my sister who was underage? Dude, there was something weird that he did every the night before every game. I think he watched the movie City Slickers with Billy Crystal. Yeah. Because he's a, he's a Mormon. Like, he wouldn't go out. He wouldn't drink. He wouldn't, wasn't a womanizer. So when they were going on the road... Steve Young? Steve Young. Really? He would not go out. So Tell he, that to his eyeballs when he was ogling my older sister at the Gooneville. <laughs> <laughs> she looked like you? No. All right. Um, but, yeah, he would not go out, and he would just stay in his hotel room, and I'm pretty sure it was City Slickers that he would watch over and over and over and over again. You say before every game? Yes. I mean, that is a banger of a movie. Yeah, I was about to call it delicious, but... Incredible movie. <laughs> Not quite as, uh, or yeah, the search for Curly's gold was didn't live up to it, but it was no, a it was, it was a fine was, sequel. It was nice to be brought back to the yeah. city slicker world. Who's it? it's uh, Daniel Stern, Billy Crystal, and what's Bruno the, Kirby. Bruno Kirby, love that guy. He plays. Uh, have you got it to the episode yet? In Entourage, where he's in it. No, he plays like the president of uh, whatever the company that makes Shrek is. What is that? DreamWorks. And, uh, oh, you don't know who Dom is? Mm -mm. You haven't met Dom yet? I have not, no. Are you on season four? I think it might be almost time. Dude, I haven't watched any more since we last spoke about this. Well, I'm going to have to get a crack because I have off Thursday. You got to watch the Dom episodes, dude. So we can start really riffing about Dom. I will. I'll be caught up for you next week. (laughs) Um, Why does Bruno Kirby remind me of Dom Herrera? Is it just because they're Italian guys from the same. They have like a. That that it's that twang. Yeah, yeah. That, that uh, nasally twang. That uh je ne sais quoi. Yeah. Is it a nasally twang? Don is not so much, but it's uh Yeah, Bruno Kirby's got almost like a high pitch kind of Yeah. Uh, is is Bruno Kirby pa- uh, passed on to the next oh. next mortal coil? Two thousand six. 
Whoa. So a while. Almost Whoa. 20 years. Damn. Damn, he could have been that that old, man. Jeez. Yeah, not even 60. 49. Yeah. Oh, my fucking God. I'm next. <laughs> Was he a uh, comedian too? Do you know? I don't think or was so. Was he just an actor? I just remember seeing him in movies. Little guy, five foot six. Yeah. Oh boy, is that how he died? What if you could buy a dive being too short? You could, man. Oh, he had leukemia. Oh, oh boy, is that too short disease? Appropriate, John. It's a long disease for a short man. I'm sorry. I'm, Mike, I'm sorry. Has he got long to live? <laughs> I'm afraid not. <laughs> Do you think uh, they buried him in a minion casket? <laughs> <laughs> they got to be cheaper than Rego caskets, right? Um, I don't know. I think... The airbrushing alone would cost mm-hmm. you a pretty penny. <laughs> but what if, uh, all right, suppose like they misnumbered the minions, so it was a defect. And they were just like, all right, we we made this for somebody small that was dying. We, It's defective. We couldn't, in good conscience, bury somebody that small in a defective minion casket. So we're going to knock half the price off of this. If you had a small person that needed to be buried, would you buy that defective casket to put them in? What answer will stop you from talking about this? <laughs> yes. Uh, the answer is yes. All right, yes. That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> oh, man. We got, uh, what, just uh, what six weeks until uh, spring training games start? Oh, yeah, brother, less than well, you're, a month. You're a hockey guy. You got, you got a nice little in-between. There's so much going on right now. The Sixers watch, are good. I don't watch basketball until the playoffs. Yeah. Sixers are good. The Flyers are good. Flyers are uh, leaps and bounds above where they should be right now. Good. So that's fun. Oh, man. You know what we're missing tonight at the Sixers game? What? All right. First of all, we're missing free pickleball rackets. What? Everybody got a free, like a professional brand pickleball racket. That's a very cool gift. And I think there was a second gift tonight as well. And... Do you know who's playing the halftime show tonight? Yeah. The Yin Yang Twins. Oh! Dude, we missed a fucking banger Fuck. at the stadium tonight, dude. It was going off. It was, they played like a one o'clock game yesterday. Yeah. I was driving uh, past the stadium, and it was fucking packed, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Cool time for a game. Yeah, one o'clock on a Monday. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Prices were pretty reasonable tonight for having a Yin Yang Twin concert and free racquetball. What were they? Uh, it was like forty nine for two hundred level. Oh, that's pretty good. Not bad. I've yeah. seen definitely fucking cheaper. Mm-hmm. I've seen them like eighteen bucks right. this season. Just yeah. depends on who they're playing, I guess. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I might go see hockey soon, and uh, I might go see Madonna. Uh, uh, what is twenty fifth? What is that next Thursday? That's got to be a fucking pricey ticket, well, right? Here's the deal: the last time I checked, they were a hundred bucks. That's not bad. I know, but I don't want to spend that much. You think they'll go lower? I'm, I'm going to try the day of and see if, if I can get somewhere in the neighborhood of like 50-ish. I think I might go see Madonna. By yourself? If need be. This is not you taking your wife on a date. She doesn't like Madonna. Whoa, man. I uh, shouldn't have asked so many questions because now you're looking pretty weird. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> you, don't, you wouldn't want to go to a concert to see the hottest 70-year-old pop star wiggle? I th- I honestly I think I might have seen Madonna as a child. I think I might have been a concert that my parents took me to because my older sister yeah. wanted to go to. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, she looks very strange, <laughs> and uh, I'd say that's debatable now. I think uh, Cher or Dolly are definitely hotter than Madonna I do. now. I do. Oh yeah. But yeah, Madonna, Madonna fucking destroyed her face, dude. Yeah. She looks crazy. I don't even give a fuck. I, I want to be scared by an old woman, but <laughs> she's got so many jams, man. Yes. There's she's got so many great songs that she a plays. A great track list. Yeah. I'll bet the concert is pretty sick. I saw a clip of her, though, like, yeah, dancing, and she's, like, harnessed to the thing behind her. Yeah. So, like, she's not even really oh using her own weight. Yeah. <laughs> she's not even holding herself up. Oh, dude, her I arms. would love to see that in person, man. I think I might be going to see uh, Dwight Yoakam in Lancaster. In oh. March or April, maybe. 
who the fuck was I just telling this? But I was saying that uh, when we were driving throughout Nevada and California, hearing Dwight Yoakam play in the desert was it, it's 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 burned into my my psyche like how enjoyable that experience was in large part it because that was perfect. together perfectly right. right it's like yeah. the perfect kind of music yeah it was great to listen man. to in the desert mm. and you see some fucking wild horses and you're like oh like, my god i forgot about those horses man yeah yeah that's <sighs> how i discovered dwight yokum we were driving through the desert a few years ago and had a minivan that just happened to have sirius xm and we came across that channel and i was like oh, this is like perfect fucking music mm-hmm. and then i heard we listened to that for like 72 hours probably god damn man that was so great man i know i can't it's crazy that like I mean, we probably drove for like close to a thousand miles maybe mm-hmm. or like 800 miles it's like you don't get tired of it well like, you did all the driving so yeah, but I mean, like, you don't get tired of, like, seeing the desert. Which, I know. Like, it's You would think, like, oh, enough already. I get it. Mountains and fucking rocks and dry shrubs. But mm-hmm. it's like, every time you turn a corner, it's like, whoa. So yeah. cool. For me, it was wonderful because, willfully, like, I just inundate myself with stimulation. So, on a day-to-day basis, like, I always got something, whether it's a TV or a phone in front of my face or mm-hmm. something. And then going to Vegas and it's just like your senses are just on fire Uh and being there for fucking, I think it was four days that I was there going from Vegas to the desert is the perfect cleanser. Yeah, you're right. It does work perfectly. Yeah. I love that shit, man. I wish I could go back, man. Pretty cold and trucky right now. I bet. Yeah. Pretty cold everywhere. It seems (laughs) it really does that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would love to go back in that lake, though, man. I know. I kind of am pissed at myself for not getting in that last day, mm-hmm. right across from the house, Same, yeah. just jumping in, jumping I out. Know. Well, guess we got to go back then. I, that's right. Yeah, what a nice trip, man. Um, I've been getting San Francisco fever, man. Yeah. I've been looking at a bunch of uh, <gasps> crime stuff relative to that. Um, the Night Stalker was there right before he got caught. Really? Yeah. Was he mostly SoCal? Yes, yeah. and uh, he felt the heat in the summer of 85. I guess everybody does in Southern California, but um, he was really feeling the heat, so he took a bus up to up to um, San Francisco, and he was squatting in a house that we passed by. Oh, yeah, that's what you sent the other day. A very spooky house in a very spooky circumstance. But, yeah, some uh, fucking poor soul sat next to that guy on a fucking Greyhound, probably. I know, man. Wow. I have no idea what you're sitting next to. Yeah, and it's like... Mm-hmm. Greyhound buses in California are like I mean probably everywhere But like 95% crazy people Yeah Like you are going to sit next to a crazy pe- person mm-hmm. But to sit next to the fucking Night Stalker I And know. not even realize it yeah. Wow I guess if you don't have a live chicken on the bus You can really play it cool <laughs> <laughs> Yeah so much cool shit in San Francisco man Yeah I feel like you got teased mm-hmm. By just being there for like five hours when we flew out of there, yeah, it's you got really a very small glimpse of it. Yeah, it really seemed like a murder nuts paradise. Yeah, we went to like the most touristy, yeah, part of it. It's so cool. I mean, very cool. That's where I usually go, dude. That arcade was kind of fucked up. I yeah, like that. I'd never been there before. Me too. Like very creepy old games. Yeah, very weird. Do you remember the name of that arcade? No, I think it's just like old timey fucking. Yeah, it was very cool though. The old time, the old timey racist machine uh, arcade. Yeah, I definitely want to dick around. Um, but this summer, um, I definitely want to go. I, I'd plan on going out to Oakland because I want to see the stadium before they close it down. That'd yeah, be cool. And I think I'll do like a, a tag team of Oakland and San Francisco, go see yeah. both ballparks. Yeah. Been to both, I think. I think I saw a game in the Coliseum. Have you ever been out there, Jeff? No, I've never been in California at all. Oh, man. It's a wonderful state, man. I would say the best state as far as geography and landscape goes. Choose your own adventure. Yeah. So much shit to do. Beautiful beaches. Incredible mountains. The desert. Yeah. That was uh, my first time driving through Northern California. And uh, I loved it just as much as uh, Southern California. Mm -hmm. Not much different, but... Not as hot. 
for the no. most part. Uh, different vibes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know that I could put it into words right now, but. That probably means we've hit our limit of words today. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have fun. Uh, do you want to promote anything before we go? Uh, if this comes out before I go to Austin, I'll be at Cap City January 26th and 27th, and then I'll be in Indianapolis Helium March 22nd and 23rd, and we will be in Boston April 5th. Yep, we'll be at White Bull Tavern in uh, beautiful Boston, Massachusetts April 5th. I can't fucking wait for that. Uh, grab tickets to that and... Uh, yeah, if you go to uh, on Hideout Comedy's page, fuck, I should let me look this up real quick, so I know a specific website to direct people to. Beep boop up, Boston, Hideout Comedy. All right, here Wait, we go, Bull baby. Tavern. Go to hideoutcomedyboston.com, dot com, and our show is April fifth, baby. Can't wait to go to that. Also, um, I'm picking one more person for the weekend with the rain train. And I'm picking that person on the last episode of this month. We got Jeff on my calendar there. January 31st is a live episode, right? Correct. All right, cool. So I'm going to pick that during the live episode. And everybody that buys a copy of my book, On Perks, is eligible for that weekend. Uh, Buy a copy at onperks.com. And I'm going to pick, uh, John and Jake are going to pick a random order number. And whoever that person is, I'm going to fly you to beautiful Delco, Pennsylvania for the weekend. We're going to go to my favorite pizza place. We're going to go to a Phillies game with Chris Wood, Ryan Shaner. We're going to have a special screening of MacGruber uh, with my dear friend Tim Butterly. John, if you could make it, I would love for you to come from MacGruber. Jeff, if you can come from MacGruber, you're more than welcome, brother. And then we're doing a true crime tour with John and Jake. And uh, time permitting, whatever the fuck else you want to do, it's your weekend. But uh, I can't wait to pick one more person for that. And that person will be picked again. The live episode... On January 31st. I will download a random number generator for that occasion. Thank you. You're welcome. So sweet of you. All right. Uh, if you're watching this on Patreon, thank you for becoming a patron. And if you're not a patron yet, join the Patreon. You get every episode a week early. You get an extra episode every month. You get multiple live streams per month uh, just for patrons. Uh, we're doing a movie watch along next week. We do book clubs, movie watch alongs, not every month, but we intertwine them throughout the year. There's some them. There's something extra every week for you. Live AMAs, just all kinds of fun shit. Yeah, there's like minimum four hours of bonus content a month for patrons. Just only. Patreon exclusive. Yeah. And then on top of that, we're writing to murderers now too. Oh yeah. Hey, I recently had my heart broken by Jody Ares, but that isn't gonna stop me. Fucking I'm gonna bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna keep writing. I might even keep writing to her, but but uh, patrons helped us write that letter to Jody Arias. So whoever we write to next, patrons are once again going to help us put that bitch together. And, uh, yeah, you can join by going to patreon.com slash little stinkers. That's L-A-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. It's either 4 bucks a month, $40 for the year. Um, we get all that stuff, and uh, we're adding more shit all the time. So it's the best way to support the show. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. And uh, we will see you next time. And hopefully Jake's asshole is feeling better. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Later, guys. There's so much fucked up shit to get into. Well, stickers.